in this video, I'm going to be talking about this advice that I have heard, I'll just say it, bad lawyers give people who have been accused of domestic violence again and again, and it can really hurt your case. My name is Veronica. I'm a domestic violence defense attorney here in California, and I help people put their cases behind them so that they can enjoy their lives and their freedom. I'm also the creator of a course called Defeat the DVRO, in which I teach you from start to finish how to win your restraining order hearing if you are representing yourself. So if that is an issue that you're dealing with in addition to a domestic violence criminal case, get your free first class in the link down below. Okay. So let's jump right in. What is this bad advice that is just so prevalent, at least in the state of California, for people who have been arrested for domestic violence? It is to wait for the prosecution to make a decision, to not do anything, to just simply wait after you get arrested, you bond out, just wait for your first court date, don't do anything. Of course, hire the lawyer, but don't do anything else. No need for the lawyer to do anything. We'll just all sit and wait. This is terrible advice because after you are arrested before your first court date, yes, the DA has to make a decision. In fact, you have a golden window of opportunity to try to influence the DA's decision. I mean that you explain your side of the story. If the alleged victim wants to drop charges, that your attorney submits a statement from them. What about all of the good things about you? Not just that maybe this is your first arrest, but your work life, family life, education, hardships, all of that. What about letters from your family, friends, people who know you that know that you are a good person and not a violent person? All of that, all of those things that are in your favor are so important to get in front of the DA because otherwise all that they're looking at is the police report, which if you got arrested, you know isn't gonna be good for you, right? And your criminal history or your lack thereof. There's a big chunk missing there. Maybe you didn't talk to the police, right? Which is good. They were probably going to arrest you no matter what you said anyway. And so it's better not to give a statement without talking to an attorney where you are flustered, where you can misspeak, where you're nervous, right? But that means that the DA doesn't know your side of the story. Maybe once they hear your side of the story, they'll think, oh, that completely makes sense. But you have to get that over to the DA first. And so this period of time is actually arguably, unless you're actually going to go to trial, one of the most important times in the case. If the DA files charges against you, it is going to be very difficult to get them dropped. A DA will be assigned to your case whose job it is to prosecute you, right? In contrast, before the first court date, a different DA usually will be going through this big stack of cases and trying to decide, should I file more serious charges against this person? It's a possibility. It's not common with domestic violence, but it can happen. Should I file less serious charges, you know, reduce a felony to a misdemeanor maybe, or should I drop the case altogether? That is their job to look at these cases and use their discretion to figure out what to do. Why would you sit and wait? And I'll give you three examples of when I contacted the DA before court and what happened. So example number one, I contact the DA before court, explain to them all the good things about my client, my client's side of the story. I had a statement from the alleged victim there and the reviewing DA calls me. And so at this point, we don't get a copy of the police report. We generally only get a copy of charges are actually filed. So I don't know what it says in there, right? My client doesn't know either. And the DA asks me if the alleged victim is my client's side chick. Now my client wasn't married, this is just his girlfriend. So I was confused and I explained that, no, it's not his side chick. And so the DA explains to me that she was confused by what I submitted to her describing my client, his life, etc. cetera, uh, because in the police report, the police had made it sound like the victim was his mistress. Now it's not that the DA should make a decision as to whether or not to file based on if you're cheating, but the fact is that they are humans. They use their discretion. Part of what I'm trying to get them to believe and understand is that you are a good person deserving of a second chance. And for some DAs, the fact that you're maybe cheating on your wife and then you get arrested for domestic violence with your mistress doesn't look that good. It definitely doesn't look as good as, no, this is just your girlfriend. It was a misunderstanding. So those charges ended up getting dropped. Now, if I had not contacted the DA before court, the DA would have continued to have this understanding that my client was cheating on his wife with the victim and charges easily and probably would have gotten filed. Example number two, client hired me somewhat last minute. 
I think only about a week before his court date. And so I was actually in the middle of a trial at the time, but as soon as we had a break, I'm calling the DA's office, contacting them. I actually caught the DA as she was eating her lunch and she had not yet filed charges against my client, but she had already decided that she was going to. She said that even though this is his first time getting arrested, there's an allegation of strangulation in it and that makes it a really serious case that so they're going to file felony charges. So. I talked to her, I explained my client's side of the story, that there was no strangulation, that there were no marks consistent with strangulation. She actually realized, okay, actually the cops have not given me the photos. I would like to see the photos before I make this decision as to whether or not to file felony charges against someone. So ultimately I convinced her to send the case to the city attorney's office. The city attorney's office only files misdemeanors, so that was already a win. And ultimately I was able to convince the city attorney to drop the charges. Example number three, this was a second time domestic violence case. So when it is second time domestic violence, especially if it was recent, chances are that the DA is going to file charges against you. They figure, okay, well, this isn't just a misunderstanding. You didn't have two misunderstandings here, which of course could happen. Uh, and in the first case, the client had taken a deal uh, he had the public defender, didn't really take it seriously, just took a plea. But I contacted the DA before court and explained not just the circumstances of our case, but actually went back and explained the circumstances of the first case. And ultimately, the DA decided to drop the charges, just warning that if he gets another one before the statute of limitations is up, then they'll probably file our case here. Okay, these are just three examples, but I have so many more examples of cases where we have been able to get the charges dropped before court. Yes, the DA might decide on their own after looking at the police report that they're just not going to file. It happens sometimes, but don't you want to maximize your chances of it getting dropped? It gets dropped, you never have to go to court, you never have to deal with the stress or the risk of having these charges on your record. It's also a substantial expense to go to trial. And if you can avoid all of that and just get the whole thing dropped early on, that is absolutely your best case scenario. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, if you have a restraining order case, make sure you get your free first class via the link down below. If you have a domestic violence criminal case, feel free to give me a call. You can also find my number in the description box. And if you did find this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook.